Hello, everybody. Welcome to The Market Rant, a new uh, podcast where we rant on markets and pretty much anything we want to talk about. My name is Joe Fami. I'm with my co-host, Tom Canfield. How are hey, you, Joe? Tom? I'm very good, thank you. And you today? I'm doing great. We awesome. uh, did a pilot episode last week. I think we're both very grateful that we got some awesome feedback. So we're back this week. But you got to help me understand the first question right off the bat is like, What's that? People liked you. I don't get that. Can you help explain that to me? <laughs> yeah, that made no sense to me either. I don't get it. Well, a little bit. Like, I know I'm better looking than you. That's, I got more hair fair. than you. So that's, those are two like that's, huge positives. That's two for two. Yeah, I guess um, no. No, you're you're like know. you're I'm like honest. a guy. I'm I'm <laughs> honest um, in a very abrupt and abrasive way sometimes, but um, it it helps people understand. I guess one of the biggest things that of why I do this or why I tweet or all that shit is I, I like, I want people who are out there who are trying to learn how to do this or who are doing it and struggling to realize that they're no different than guys that have been doing it like you and me for a long time. I and mean, we make the same stupid fucking mistakes that they do. Yeah. And that's such a great point. And, and, and the guys that are quote unquote professional traders, they don't want, like they don't want to show their flaws and they don't want people to know. And so these people that are learning think that they have to be perfect. And they don't. I mean, we're. I'm. We'll get into that later. But like, yeah, I'm, that, I'm save a huge that, idiot that's just constantly flawed. <laughs> save that point for later because I do have yeah, a great, yeah. a great thing going. Let's at least for the people who don't know uh, who we are, we have a lot of you know Twitter followers, social media followers that kind of know a little bit about this. Maybe if you want to take uh, a couple minutes, tell them a little bit about you know your style and you know and so okay. forth with trading, and then we can get into some of the psychology stuff. Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, originally. Um, after bouncing around for uh, probably a year, year and a half, trying everything and losing money every way possible, I, you know, I, thanks to a guy by the name of Pat Walker, who many of you may know out there on Twitter, uh, we found each other in a chat room and he taught me um, the IBD, Can Slim, what everybody knows now from a software standpoint is Market Smith philosophy of swing slash position trading. And I fell in love with it. I love okay. it. Um, and it's very near and dear to your heart as well. Uh, and I traded that way for a long time, probably, well, up until about a year ago, quite honestly, with a couple of interesting diversions that over the course of uh, our episodes we can get into that were quite painful, but good experiences. <laughs> um, I made a shift of not quite a year ago to being a, a day trader. One, it's something I always wanted to do. And I've dabbled in it in the past and never had success, but there's something sexy about day trading that always just kind of I, my brain gravitated towards. Like, I want to figure this out. Uh, you know, so it's personal challenge to a certain degree. But the other side of it was I was struggling as a swing trader because the overnight risk changed probably 2015, 2016. And I wasn't managing the gaps as well. And my position sizing was getting bigger than I was comfortable with. And okay. I was finding all kinds of problems with my psychology and, and just, and I said, I got to get out of this, this feeling like the market just owns me. Um, and so I started shifting into day trading and slowly but surely, um, I, started, I, I started to find my footing there. Um, basically, I'm taking the same shit that I knew for swing trading and applying it because all I trade is, you know, SPY, Qs, the, you know, the big cap growth stocks, the institutionally owned growth stocks that are the stocks that I was swinging. Yeah. I'm now day trading them instead. And so I've, and so it's taken me a while. Uh, I've still got all kinds of emotional issues that I didn't have as a swing trader, which was really nice that I I'm finding as a day trader. Uh, but damn, it's fun. Like I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm in love with trading again because for a while I kind of got burnt out. And so this has really sparked me. Um, well, it's self-awareness. I think yeah. that's really care that you, it's really great that you're aware. That's 90% of it is self-awareness. You're aware of you were dealing maybe with some struggles, swing trading, or maybe the market changed. So you switched, we well, switched up a little. What I like about what you said is that you have the same basket of stocks. So that's because yeah. uh, as a total aside, I think the majority of traders fail because they trade absolute shit. And yes. I don't care what you trade, but my which point is- Which is what is, I did the first time I ventured into it. And which it is what we all did. You don't want to buy so, penny stocks and you want to buy the stuff that's beaten down. But at least I say give yourself a shot with stocks that mirror some of the greatest winners and have potential yeah. to go up, which is great growth stocks, great earnings and sales, blah, blah, blah. At least I'm ledger, leveraging my experience and I'm staying in my lane. Stay yes. in your lane, leverage your experience and et cetera. And all that stuff we can 
we can talk more about. Yeah, no, that's, so that's great. That's kind of how I got here. And I was, you know, I was a hockey coach for a long time. I love trying to encourage people in my own unique way. And one of the things I love doing is letting people know that, listen, we're, we're all doing stupid shit. It's just that some of us have kind of figured out how to work around that or how to climb over the top of it and whatever. And nobody is anywhere near as bad as they think they are. That's, that's, a, great, that's a great point. Yeah. That's a great point. So yeah. Tell us about you, bro. Uh, I don't know. I, I, my, my turn ons include long walks on the beach. Um, I oh mean, <laughs> please actually, I'd rather you not detail your turn ons right now. I, was, I know a few of them. I was reading, like I was reading my Tinder profile. I was, I was reading my Tinder profile. Now I'm, okay. I've been trading 21 years. Uh, same thing with you. I think we all start, um, with just trying to figure out and then you want to get some sort of a system, some sort of a philosophy, which is, you know, I've gravitated towards the can slim IBD market Smith type of yeah. stuff. I like to at least have a, I don't care what your time frame is. I always say at least have a, a group of stocks. That's a, you know, a, like start with strong stocks because right now, especially this is a stock pickers market more than ever, because clearly yeah. this virus okay. is unfortunately hurting certain companies, but others are flourishing. And now I'd rather own individual stocks than the index because the index is going to contain a lot of those shitty stocks. So that's a whole other story. But I've been trading yeah. 21 years. I manage money for people with the firm Zor Capital through managed accounts. I also started a new educational product because the purpose there is I think there is so much to learn and it's just a lot of content when yeah. you, know, you want to take Look it to at someone. you with the shameless plug right there. Boom. Yeah, there Boom. you go. Actually, folks, it's really good shit, though. Um, <laughs> Thank you. Not, not, not that I want to promo, you know, Fami's. No, you know, no, no. But the, what I want to get but... into is basically I'm trading, manage money, blah, blah, blah. I, I think, you know, that people get it. We spoke a couple years ago. We've met at uh, some of these Trader for a Cause events that I right. talked about. The part that's fascinating to me is – couple years ago, I give my relative strength talk and great. People liked it. And then last year is when you spoke and I gave a technical talk and people get up there and they talk about their candlesticks and their trading philosophy like all of us do. What made you unique is that you talked about psychology and you, uh, you could hear a pin drop. You could, I mean, it was just a pin drop in that room. People were so fascinated by that. And it got me thinking. I said, you know what? I've always said that trading is 80% psychology, 20% mechanics, meaning everyone can have all their different philosophies, but if your head's not right, you're screwed. Yeah. So you actually got up there and gave a raw talk that everybody loved. Now, the point I'm going to hand it over to you is what's even more fascinating is the conference was on a Saturday, Sunday, that ended at 1 o'clock. Uh, on a Sunday. Sanglucci, our dear friend, said, hey, if you guys want to stick around, we have the room. We're doing sort of a, it, what turned into be a therapy session. <laughs> yeah. We're doing a talk at two o'clock if you guys want to stick around. During all the 20 or 25 talks during the two-day session, people were popping in and out, getting coffee, listening to some of it. What was fascinating to me is an hour later, everybody was there. We were in the room for two and a half hours. It was literally like a Traders Anonymous session. And right. that's what clicked to me. And you got up there with Sanglucci and Nate got up there as well. Uh, also, you know, a great trader. And people were fascinated more in, the, I'll get to my point. They were fascinated more in the psychology than any sort of technicals and any sort of charts that you could put up there. And I, it really got me thinking that's what we should be talking about more than all the other stuff. Yeah, and it's it's important to talk about it from a trader's perspective. I mean, and I, listen, there's a lot of awesome like trading coaches and trading psychologists out there who I've learned a shit ton from. But there's 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 nothing that resonates more than a trader who's been through those battles, who is still going through those battles every day, talking right. about it in in a real world. I mean, I set that little video after I got stopped out of all my snap stock because of the Gilead news. And it was like, I was livid. That was um, a great video, by the way, but I thanks. think it, I, I, it was very helpful for a lot of people. Well, it's just, it just helped people realize, hey, we, we all get screwed by the market. How are you going to react to it? And more often than not, I don't react well. I don't. But that day, somehow, I had the fortitude to say, you know what, I'm going to go take a walk. And I'm thankful that I did because it helped preserve, you know, whatever, whatever gains I had going on. Uh, that's day. smart. Again, self-awareness. You're aware but, of that. But the point that you're about the psychology and, and 
I say it and I will say it, like how you trade doesn't matter. Like it literally doesn't matter. There's a thousand ways to trade. There's a thousand ways to make money. Your job as a trader is to take money out of the market. No one way is better than another way. It's just right. your way. It's There's no right or wrong way to trade. There are but only, no. res there are only results. And, and so anybody that's on Twitter, that you're out there, since that's my social media medium for the most part. Yeah. And you're commenting about how somebody else trades or you're disagreeing with how they trade or you think that they're trading wrong. May I politely say, fuck off. <laughs> like, seriously, fuck off. Everybody's different. These people. That's our final point, though. I'm not supposed to get into that. That's right okay. Now, you, you had to get it off your chest. I get it. What no, I want to. But no, it, it, we can talk about it. I, I, my biggest pet peeve, fuck it, we're ranting. My biggest pet peeve yeah, is here we go. people who think because you have, let's just pick a round mm -hmm. number, 50,000 Twitter followers, maybe you have a blog, maybe you've done some TV or whatever, that you're a great trader. And I'm like, where is this coming from? Um, because I know someone, someone said to me one time, oh, this guy's a great trader. I won't mention the name. He's a good friend. And I said, I said, how do you know he's a great trader? They're like, oh, he's 50,000 followers. And I said, uh, he did this guy, the guy doesn't even have an E-Trade account. I don't even think he even trades stocks. So my point is, don't put other people on a pedestal. Put yourself on a pedestal. There you go. A little bit higher of yourself. Because honestly, um, uh, you know, number one, you don't know. Uh, some people have bought Twitter followers. I don't know how insecure you have to be to buy Twitter followers because I could yeah. really give yeah, a shit. Yeah, I know some I, people that have done that. Yeah, and, I'm, and some people who are listening have. And you know what? I'm sorry. It's insecure because no one cares. You're not Taylor Swift trying to sell albums. Not that she even needs to buy them, but that's a different. Anyways, my point is that people, um, th there's a quick story where I remember I tweeted out, I was looking at a stock. I missed it. It went up huge. And I said, you know what? I was looking at this and I didn't trade it. And someone politely said, you know what, Joe? It's really nice to see and hear that experienced traders are dealing with the same stuff novice traders are. Like and every day. And I was like, I was, it was a great comment. I wasn't, I wasn't complaining. I'm just saying that should be intuitive. You don't think Paul Tudor Jones and David Tepper deal with psychology issues when they're trading? All the time. Just no different than time. someone who's starting with a couple hundred bucks. So um, we talked about in our last video that we would talk about ways to, we, you and I deal with to help with that psychology to help yeah. keeping yourself mentally tough. Everyone loved your line controlling that village in your head. The village um, of idiots. A village. <laughs> we, and if, we live with a village of idiots in our head and you never know which one of them is going to all of a sudden spring out their front door and hijack your mouse. You just don't. It's, it's, it's a great line. If you want to talk about that a little bit, you know, ways that, you know, have helped you. You talked about going for a walk and all that stuff. I mean, just some ways that have helped you when you are trying to help, you know, when you can't help yourself. Sometimes. When you're trying to protect yourself. Because like, you've seen all the lists and, and, and you've read all the books and everything that, at the end of the day, you learn by doing. And, and there's only so much you're going to get from a trading book. Because um, it, you know, the, be focused, be disciplined, be prepared, be unbiased, be calm, be present you know, trade without expectation, trade your process, follow yeah. your plan. Okay. When I do all of those things, I print money. I make money hand over fist. Money is making money is easy. I get that. But the real elephant in the room is we don't do that all the time. Fuck, I'm, I'm not disciplined 80% of the time. That's my big problem. Nobody so is. The, Nobody so is. the question is, what do you do when you're not disciplined? It's not about being these wonderful characteristics that you have people that cut your losses and ride your winners. It on their little Twitter yeah, feed, it's and then on you its, get all the, oh, what a such uh, wisdom. Uh, so cut your losses like, and ride your winners. Yeah, put it on a post-it and it's like that shit's not wisdom, people. Get your head out of your ass. It's just like basic requirements to exist. Okay. Right. The elephant in the room is how do I deal with the fact that I can't do these things on a regular basis. How about I can't do any of these things at all? I just showed up. The market's been open for 15 minutes. I'm hungover. I overslept. And I somehow think that it's a good idea for me to start trading. Go. Now what do you do? When all of a sudden you find yourself down $2,500 in the first 15 minutes because you didn't realize that so-and-so so company just announced this or that because you weren't there that morning. You didn't pay attention. You overslept. Anyway, 
No, you, you're, you're stressing a key point that your mental state is 100% important when you start your day, yep. when you're sitting in front of your monitor, your mental state in anything you do. If you're, if you're a golfer, you're an athlete, you're a lawyer, you're presenting in front of a, a jury, whatever you do for your or living, your uh -huh. mental state is 80, 90% of it. And you, your job is to get yourself in as strong of a mental state especially when you're trading, because the difference with trading, I, my friend has a great analogy with the difference between playing blackjack and trading, which is if you play blackjack and win a hundred bucks, let's just say, and it's the end of the shoe, you can say, I'm leaving with that hundred bucks. You don't know if you stayed another shoe, whether you would have won 200 or lost it all. You know what the right. difference in trading is? When you sell something, you always find out afterwards what happens. So you make a thousand bucks in a trade and you take that profit and you're like, oh man, I could have made 2000 where it's, it's never a finite thing. It's all the market's always going to tell mindset, you though. what's that. That's a poison mindset to look and see what you would have made though. For no, me. no. What I mean is that the market, the market is full of shoulda, coulda, woulda. Right. And oh, I stopped myself out, it turned around. I didn't stop myself out, it went lower. I took a profit, it would have gone higher. Like you always find out and you're absolutely right. Next, 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 fucking move on. You have to be like a machine. You have to be next, mentally tough next, and not next. let that last trade mess with you. That's actually okay, really Okay, so you good. asked me, what do I do to overcome some of go this ahead. shit? Go ahead, go you ahead. Know, you know, the first, the first point of it is you gotta be self-aware enough to realize that you're tilting whenever that shows up. Like it showed up for me the other day and somehow I had the presence of mind. I was having a very good week. That happened. It put a little chink in my armor and all of a sudden I was like, I want my good week back. I want my good week back. And all of a sudden I'm running around like, what, what, what can I buy? What can I buy or what can I sell? What trade can I get into to get that fucking money back? And it's like, whoa, dude, like dial yourself back. And I grab myself, but it's like, so what do I do? First of all, you gotta be self-aware enough to recognize that you're in that situation. Secondly, and often I do realize I'm in that situation, but then I'm like, yeah, but I'm Tom Canfield. I've been trading for 23 years. I can overcome myself here. Like I spew all kinds of bullshit into my head about how I am, you know, I'm better than the average Joe and I should be able to manage this. Well, the point is I can't, I can't, I'm an emotional being. And sometimes you have to physically remove yourself from the screens and walk away and, and refresh your mind in some way, shape, or form. Take a walk. Turn some music on that fires your ass up. Music is very helpful. Reading. I get away and I go read. I don't read trading books. Good God, don't go read a trading book. You don't need <laughs> to understand how to trade better. When you're struggling, it's probably not because you need to learn more about price action. It's probably you need to learn more about yourself and figure out how to get your head out of your ass. Yeah. So that you can see the price action for what it is. One of the great things after I've gotten my ass handed to me that I've learned how to do is, I, you know, and part of it's thankful to my experience, I've got times where I've had a lot of success. And all of you out there probably can, can look back in windows of when you were really doing well. Be it a day, a week, a month, a year, doesn't matter. The point is you did it. So the fact that you did it means that you can do it again. You have to understand that you're a good trader and you have to go back and remember those windows and, and remind yourself that you know what you're doing. Because after you go through a period of losses, you know, I can, I, like, I'm, I'm the guy that I can string nine nice green days in a row. And then the 10th day, I, I, I trade like I've got my head up my ass and I, you know, I take bigger losses than I should or whatever. I'm still up for the, for the 10 days. But all I remember is that one day, I mean, I'll walk into the kitchen and I'll tell her, oh my God, I don't even know if I can make the house payment. We may not ever be able to make the house payment again, honey. I can't trade. I don't know what I'm doing. I have my head so far up my ass. I'm so out of control. I don't know that I'll ever get control. And I mean, I'm talking a mile a minute and she's just staring at me and whatever. And, but I got to get it out and get it out and lay yeah. on the floor and act like a third grader and all that stuff. <laughs>
you know. You know, I think, I think, I mean, Paul Tudor Jones writes about this beautifully, and that's what so resonated with me. He wrote a passage, and if I can find it, I'll tweet it out, where he just said, you go through that rut, and you start to question yourself. Everything. If anything, if all the stuff you've done, no matter how long you've been trading, will ever work again, if you will ever make money again. And when I read that, I'm like, this is one of the greatest traders and money managers on the planet who's been, and the reason he's great is because of consistency. And he's talking about this, and that's when it hit me. I'm like, this is one of the best. And I'm like, shit, that really resonates with me. Because yeah. I go through periods when I'm losing, and I'm like, is any of this ever going to work again? And that's where you need to control those voices in your head. I love what David Goggins says. Um, and for people who don't know him, look him up, uh, G-O-G-G-I-N-S, David Goggins. He talks about Great. the Great. most important conversation you will ever, ever have in your life is the one you have with yourself. Meaning, you wake up with it, you walk around all day with it, you go to bed with it, and you're going to act on that good or bad. Now, I'm not talking about being crazy talking to yourself. Everybody, even sane people, you walk around all day and talking to yourself about stuff. And if you are, to your point about feeding yourself like, I'm never going to make money again, I'm a shitty trader, and feeding yourself with that stuff, oh. it's so toxic. So you have to make sure your self-talk is strong. My self-talk sometimes is absolutely abhorrent. If people could hear me other than my, my, I mean, even my poor wife will look at me like going, dude, wow. Like that's awful. It's like part of it is a, is a cathartic deal for me, but like sometimes if you can't get out of your own head, you've got to put somebody else in your head. That, and I want to go back to Goggins because I used to, when I was listening to his book, I was actually struggling at that time. And I want to say it was, it was last year sometime or whatever. And having that other voice in my head saying, dude, you're good. You can do it. Just get a little tougher. You can do it. Sometimes you have to have somebody else in your ear. Yeah. Telling you, you're good enough. You're good enough. You're good enough. You're good enough. And then all of a sudden you start going, okay, I can do this. I can, yeah. I, Cause I, you I made a great point. There are periods where we do well and you have to go back to those periods when you yeah. do well and remind yourself when you're going through ruts, like, Hey, I have done well in the past. It might not be my market. Maybe I have to make some tweaks, be honest with yourself and self-awareness. That's why when I said earlier, it's amazing how people think just because you've been trading for a while, you don't make mistakes. And I'm trying to stress to people, we are human. I don't care if you're a billionaire, if you got a hundred bucks you're trading, it doesn't matter. We yeah. all make mistakes and you need to put yourself more on a pedestal than other people because we're, you know, it's, it's more important, you know, to, Focus more on, you know, the positives and keep your mind straight. I know we talked about this a little bit. One way I do it is with gratitude. I think uh, in the morning, take five or 10 minutes to focus on gratitude. We talked about this at the Traders for a Cause thing. Yeah. Um, look, I don't want to talk about religion because everyone's such a sensitive bitch about religion and it just gets people all. So this isn't religion. This is gratitude. I don't care what you believe in. God bless whatever you believe in. Even if you don't believe in God, I don't care, whatever. I'm rambling. Focus five or ten. I'm, I'm rambling. Focus five or ten minutes on something you can be grateful for because the human mind is incapable of being grateful and angry at the same time. I'll yeah. say that again. The human mind is incapable. You can't be thinking of things that you love in your life that you can be grateful for and be angry. And when you're trading, the reason this applies to trading is you can't approach your day with anger. You can't approach your day in in that you know stressed out state of mind so and if you say to yourself okay joe what can i be grateful for fuck you what can you be grateful for if you can't can you think, walk oh, yeah can you talk are you walking can you see something are you Is breathing the sun out can are you, you breathing breathe? are you breathing air it's that simple man i have a little food in my fridge i have a roof over my head kids who love me family who loves me spouse whatever it is just find you can find a hundred things you can be grateful for and when you just take i know I'm, I'm talking about gratitude with anger i should be careful <laughs> right you're really passionate it's more that you're passionate, you're passionate i'm passionate if you find yourself talking i'll calm down for a minute talking about gratitude guess what your breathing calms down your mm -hmm. head is up a little bit you have a smile on your face and you're approaching trading in the beginning of the day some people meditate some say a prayer whatever you want to do uh, i don't care whatever works for you at least put it helps put yourself in a strong state of mind to start the day. I think it's a great point. I, I for the longest time I thought the whole gratitude thing was like hokey. 
like, all right, that's just kind of, you yeah, know, another quote, another quote. Yeah, another quote, yeah. Yeah, blah, 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 yeah. Blah, blah. Another but, Instagram quote. But I've had enough people, you being one of them, who've been pounding this concept into me for the past year, because I didn't, I never did any of it. And I've kind of really actively started doing it. And it's not like I'm feeling better, but I, I'm calmer. That's I'm trading better. We I, talk. you know, I, you, and, and, and I find that my brain wants to go back to it. When I see that I'm getting pissed off and upset and uptight, and my negative speech is, is it, it is ripe and right there. I'm now pushing my brain back to some sort of gratitude just to shut it up. We've talked off camera how, you know, unfortunately, because of this, you, uh, well, I shouldn't say unfortunately, but your family's all there now. And, oh, you know, baby. You're, you got a house full of 17 kids and um, <laughs> it's it only four, like but it. it's only four. But there's my point is, with, with, yeah, there's five my, of them. There's here. other people there. But my point is you even said something which was awesome to me. You're like, hey, it's hectic. There's a lot of stress, but you know what? You wouldn't trade this, this experience for anything else in the world. No, and it's, I don't, I know a lot of people are, are, are struggling through this virus thing and, and, and can't stand that they're not at work. And I'm thankful that we're able to still work. I got all my all four of my kids home for the first time in probably four or five years and and they're home and they're not trying to kill each other which is <laughs> which is what's like they're getting along they're making bonfires out on the deck and and staying out and talking and telling stories and enjoying each other and it's i've I've never had my home this harmonious and it's like I don't want it to end that's that's, so a, that's a great thing it, that's it's, a great thing. it's it will end at some point in time. And for the rest of the world, I hope it does. But selfishly for me, I'm fine if we just stay quarantined here for another couple months because I'm, I'm having a ball just enjoying the hell out of my kids. No, and it's that's, reflecting that's in thing. the way that, I, you know, hey, you, I mean, you've had a couple of your best weeks um, in a while, you told me, yeah. in the last couple of weeks. And yeah. I think it's going back to that calm state of mind it's i think this is all about strengthening your mind and at least if you start from a an a, a, an area of calmness peace whatever you want to call it have a sound mind so you're not angry we've talked about a couple other ways which again i want to get into some charts and talk about yeah, other yeah, stuff yeah. but working out is key i know the gyms are closed and it's tough right yeah. now but when this ends you're you know sound mind sound body all that stuff working out get is on a fun. treadmill Fuck, I don't, it just, you, just even if you energy. walk even if you walk 20 minutes it's just whatever you can do yeah, that is that is very strong reading you i i admire you you read a lot more than i do yeah um and I, unfortunately i am a loser and i read a lot of trading books well i love to read i i i love to read novels because i like getting i like to escape into somebody else's story yeah you know you learn reading. tons of shit Doing the mind, the mind is a muscle. The mind is a muscle. You work out with weights. Guess what happens? Your muscles get stronger. You feed your mind with strong stuff. Guess what? Your mind gets stronger. So, um, and then we also talked about surrounding yourself with great people. You become like the five closest people you surround yourself with. If yeah. your spouse says, hey, let's go for a walk, let's go to the gym, guess what? You're probably going to go and exercise with them. If your spouse says, hey, you know, if they're a crackhead, you're probably going to sit home and hit the pipe with them. That's what happens. We become like the people we surround ourselves with. So who you surround yourself with, family, friends, whatever, make sure, you know, we don't need to be encouraged, but you, I'll let you talk about this a little bit. Oh, it is yeah, nice. Do. It is nice. I'm not saying we have to be babies, but it is nice to have that positive reinforcement for someone to remind you, hey, you know what, Tom, when you're going through a rut, you're a great trader. You went through this amazing run. Let's remind yourself of that. Yeah, I, I think it's really true. And for all of you out there that maybe if you don't have that voice that's able to get into your head to tell you how good you are, let me be that voice. You're good enough. Like, you're good enough. Yeah. Do you have some shit you got to figure out? You probably do. We all do. We all do but you're good enough. And it's just a question of kind of finding that good person more than dealing with the, you know, the animal spirits that want to, that want to show up and sabotage you. It's not a perfect, it's not a perfect science. It's not, I'm always good. And I'm able to keep that guy at bay. It's just keeping that guy at bay enough not to blow up the really good part of you. So, and, and the consistency with that is it's a, it's a constant process. Let's go to the, the those charts. Okay. Uh, no, I love what you were so we saying. Can, I mean, uh, let me let me pull up uh, the Market Smith stuff. So we can kind of go over that and, and then finish let's with pull up. 
final rant. Uh, I got a daily chart of the NASDAQ. Um, I just want to make the point. I talked about this in the last video. The biggest Unfucking believable. I cannot believe the market is doing what it's doing. I'll uh, say it's it. not I, supposed to. I turn on the news. We're all going to die. And everyone said uh, we're never going to leave our house for 17 years. Why is the yeah. market up? Shut up. Just pay attention to what the institutions are doing. I but I'm that guy. But – we we're all that guy, but I've stopped being that guy. Like you made a really yeah, good point before when you said after a trade, I'm, I admit it. I do look at what happens after a trade with, and, and that's, that's um, something I can learn from you. Stop it. Stop it. Move did, on. Did you from make money? Sometimes up, I do on. and shut up and go buy yourself a steak and enjoy yourself. Now, yeah. What uh, the other thing I'm talking about, the analogy here is these people who are like, yeah, but I'm a macro this, I'm a macro that. And I'm like, macro, uh, there's 190 countries out there. We can't even figure out our own country. You think you have the, 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 the arrogance that you can figure out how 190 of them intertwine and this and this and currencies and this is, stop it. Just know, no what the big, just know what the big institutions are doing. Sorry, I just keep ranting. Anyways, they came in, we talked about this big follow through day here, whatever it was, April 6th on the NASDAQ. Now... You, and, and learn to get a chart book. Now you see footprints uh, two weeks ago of the institutions coming in with this big volume as we continued higher, that the big institutions, your pension funds, your mutual funds, your hedge funds, that by millions and millions of shares, they're coming back into the market. Now, after the run, let's see what happens. We ran up, and guess what this week? We, pull, we just pulled back light, slightly on light volume. There wasn't any heavy selling. Like, um, and you can see it in the S&P real quick. And I'll let you talk about the 10 minute if you want. On the weekly yeah. chart, we were down a little bit after a big week on lighter volume than the previous week. So, so far, the institutions came in and haven't sold so much. I think that's productive. The, the, yeah, the reality is whether you like it or not, whether you agree with it or not, whether you think it makes sense or not, is completely unimportant. The, basic issue is we ran up into resistance up in the 2800 2050 whatever it was yeah and the response was not to go back down the response was to go sideways and we basically went sideways yeah i got the daily the s&p i got the daily s&p to kind of show yeah you know sideways. ran into the red line here is the 50 day moving average so I that's mean, the, nowhere just nice and tight here so far so good one could argue that's even somewhat of a bag of dicks pattern right there. You know, people love was, that. It, people love that pattern. I was going to ask you if you saw any bag of dicks this week, but in, in the market, uh, not as many. It wasn't. Uh, it, it, the, the market, even though it didn't go anywhere, it kind of was. Throw that ten minute up. Yeah, because it the, basically had like flow to it. It wasn't spike up, spike down, spike up, spike down like last Wednesday and Thursday were or two weeks ago. This was the start of the week, just so people have a reference. Yeah, right there. So it, so it starts down, it rolls up, rolls down. It's got much more of like a flow to it this week. Um, but look where, we, look where we pretty much, you know. We went had, nowhere. It was a we nice, I, I, yeah, look, plus or minus a percent is flat week as far as I'm concerned. Now you see that big red spike down bar, though, in the middle of Thursday, though. Oh, that's this is this is when you went. This is when you. This is when you went for a walk. That forced me on a six-mile walk. This, this that one right six there. miles. That's Jesus, I can't even drive fucker. six miles without getting tired. Yeah. Um. Yeah. There was news that Gilead's Couldn't wait drug. Till after the bell, could you? No. You had to go no, right no, out in the middle was, of the this day. This was. Oh, Tom's feeling too good about himself. Let's make sure to, yeah. put, you know, punch him in the face. That's fine. That's fine. You know, another I thing I didn't even talk about with a way to control the calmness is to take smaller position sizes. So, you know, if you take a, normally buy 100 shares, you maybe you buy 50 to deal with. We still have a high volatile market. So to deal yeah. with the higher volatility, that's another way. Again, it's never advice, just common sense. You know, hey, I'm loaded up. And sometimes you need to just calm that down a little bit because it will continue to get volatile. And just because we held up this week, I'm open minded. Maybe we head down next week. I'm open minded to a lot of stuff. Um, but I know you wanted to talk real quick about the leaders because we, you know, I think more importantly than the markets wow. is there's a lot of growth stocks. You and I are both finding, we do screens. We're both finding a lot of great growth stocks on our list. Yeah, it's nuts. I mean, we went sideways, but we still got stocks that are like moving forward. They're breaking out. And now you've got some really big names that are, that after they exploded, Netflix, Amazon, go look at their charts. They exploded and then they've basically gone sideways. They consolidated. I'll pull up uh, Amazon. They didn't go back down. So Amazon breaks out of that. out of this now, whole range and breaks out. And they if that doesn't just, get you going, if that doesn't turn you on, I don't know what does as a stock trader. Look at that. Holy when a smoke, stock or some. when a stock or a market makes a big move and doesn't give any back, that's a bullish sign. 
yeah. and just consolidates and holds up well. So far, so good. That's a good the, sign. They're all over the place. You can find that pattern or some variation of that pattern in an awful lot of growth names right now. And the reality is that's what's happening. It makes no sense to me. I don't get how it either. In the world, how in the world our economy and what our economy, in my opinion, is going to look like six months, 12 months from now, and we've got these stocks that are doing what they're doing and indexes doing what they're doing, it makes no sense. But what I think doesn't matter. And, and we'll, we'll, you'll hear that point a lot on this podcast because it, it just, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bring up two things because I know we've, we're, we're running short on time. I talk about trading dumb. And what I mean by trading dumb is like, if you saw all this price action and had no idea what was going on in the world, you'd be licking your chops as, as, as swing growth momentum. Oh, such, that's such a great, that's such an if, awesome point. Say that again. Like, Say that again. Like, that, that really resonated with me. Say that again. If you did not know what was going on in the world and you saw the indexes going sideways coming off of that, that bounce from low and some of the greatest companies in the world breaking out to new highs and then trading in tight little consolidation patterns, you'd be like, fucking sign me up. Where, who, do I, who can I borrow money from to just buy the shit out of this thing when it takes off because it's, it, because it's coiling to go again? And our brains don't want to believe it. But the reality is, is that's what price is suggesting, at least to people like Joe and I who trade the way that we do. It makes, for me... Joe's much better at divorcing himself from it because he's been saying all the time, I already know that odds are I'm going to have to shave my head at the end of the year because I tweeted out after it went down to whatever it was and it started to bounce. I said, if that's the low for the year, I'll shave my head. And I had a bunch of buddies who like clipped it and sent me pictures of it. And they said, we're going to keep track of this. And I'm like, there's no way. Well, maybe there is. I, it, I, it defies me. But I may have to shave my head, and I'll end up looking like Joe. Which <laughs> oh, if you wish you could look this pretty sometimes. I know. I know. You're going to look like Dr. Evil. I can't oh, wait. Will you do the look for you, you, though, bro. You're going to do the podcast with, uh, with your head shaved? That'll be okay, great. Okay, so, so can I go on my little trading is personal rant? Yeah, let's, let's end with the trading is personal stuff. Go ahead, please. Okay, so all of you guys who are – trying to find your niche and trying to find a way and trying to follow somebody or trying to trading is so personal. It is so specific to you. How you trade is everything about you and whatever you're doing, as long as it's working is a hundred percent good. Okay. Are there ways to tweak it ways to make better? Yeah, but that's all you. So Listening to other people as you're gathering information and getting ideas about what you want to test in the marketplace is great. But at the end of the day, you got to figure out your own shit. And so whatever you end up doing is the trigger. I tried to explain to you how I trade. I'm not sure that I could do it. Sometimes it's like people are like, well, why'd you do that? I thought you said I should do this or I should do that. I said, well, it depends. Well, I think you cut out, I think like you cut out there you for a second. Uh, you had to say that again. Say that last part again. I'm not no, even okay. sure what I just, <laughs> you don't even know what you just said. I'm just, my point is, is if, if, when I try and explain, because there's so many factors that go into it that I'm not even really aware of. And so it's like, well, you don't want to take that signal because of this, 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 and this, because everything depends. And it, and, and I, well, why'd you only take 20 cents out of that trade? Well, I only took 20 cents out of that trade because I didn't feel like being in a trade at that time because I was pissed off at my dog or something and I was stressed. I mean, there's so many different reasons. But at the end of the day, it's just, are you making money or aren't you? That's the only litmus test. Yeah. And, and so I fit the way that I trade to what my person, personality is right now. Two years from now, I might be trading different than I'm trading now, but I adapt to who I am at the time so that I can constantly stay in the most positive frame of mind possible. Yeah, and making fun of someone else the way they trade is might might be, and eh, oh. maybe we're all guilty of it at times. Look, I'm a growth guy. I used to be like, what is this guy buying this bullshit value stuff? You know what? I, I, I was guilty of that too, but I realized, you know what? There's different strategies. That's why I said there's no right or wrong way to trade. There are only results. Right. And as long as you your goal uh, with whatever I say all the time, do what works for you. Yeah. Okay? Your goal is to find something that fits 
your personality that also might fit your vocation. Maybe you're not trading full time and you have a job and you like to pop in on the markets. So you might have to have a little bit of a different time frame because you're working during the day. But my point is that you have to find a strategy that fits your personality and constantly be honest with yourself to look for ways to improve because the most successful people in the world, one thing they have in common is they're always looking to improve. So you have to do post analysis and tweak it and do something that fits your personality. Yeah. I don't do a lot of post analysis to be perfectly honest with you. I don't necessarily disagree with, with, with the people doing a lot of post analysis. It's just, did I make money or didn't I? And if I didn't, I might go back and see where I didn't. Uh, but if, if I like how I feel at the end of the day, it's like, great, let's move on to the next day. And part of that is just because I've been doing it so long, uh, that I don't feel like I necessarily have to as much. Um, that's, a, that's a good point. That's a good but, point. I, th I think for, but us. it also clouds me. I, I am so protective. Like I want to be so dumb. I don't, I don't let news on in the house. I don't, I don't want to know what's happening. If there's big, if you know, like Thursday mornings, unemployment numbers coming out at seven 30, I stay in bed. Like, I don't, I do not want to be around to find out what happened. See, I have the news on, but I also, maybe it's because I grew up with too much George Carlin influence. I don't take it seriously. If you're the, if the news is on and it's really influencing you, I agree. Turn that off. I don't take it seriously. I take I don't it with think a grain of salt. people realize how influenced they actually are. See, I do get influenced. It's like, called television opinions. programming for a reason. They are programming our minds. So I keep it on, but I'm like, nah. Whatever. Right. Just, so you're better than me. We get it. Okay. We I'm get saying it. I'm, I'm saying you I'm better. I'm trying to encourage. Well, I am better, but no, that's not my point. <laughs> you're way better than me at this stuff. I'm trying to encourage people. If you do have it on, don't find a way to be mentally tough so it doesn't affect you. Or if you like X Y Z stock and some analyst comes out with a downgrade in the morning, that shouldn't force you to sell it. Stick with your own convictions. Yeah, I get it. You know who's mentally tough, Joe? Who? Angus Young. Angus See Young. Angus, is, Angus See Young. Angus is back there. That's a pit for anybody you don't know. Next to my skis, that's a picture of Angus Young. My first concert I ever went to, ACDC. Flying well, it was wall. my first concert I went to too. Flying that is one tour. tough little motherfucker. Let me tell you something. The amount of shows that kid has done, call him a kid because he acts like a kid. He dresses yeah, like man, a kid. Yeah, he's got horns. But if on you his think, head. if you think of that guy, shows up. He plays the same damn songs every year, all the time. Same goofy leg struts. Flawless. That yeah. is, talk about process, a picture of process. It's one of the reasons I have his poster, even though I love this, I love his music, but they are the epitome of a grinding, hardworking, we just, we do what we do and we show up and we do it every day to the best of our ability and people freaking love it. Consistency. And they have great success. Consistency yeah. and process. You can learn we're gonna, a lot from we're gonna, We need to talk about simplicity, but I'm not going to, we're, we're going to talk about that next week. Uh, okay. Because I think it's 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 another huge issue that goes with ego and 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 all kinds of other stuff. But I don't want to get into it this yeah. Week. No, and I just want to end for talked people out. for people who asked about. Uh, we will we do plan to put the audio up, you know, Spotify, iTunes, and all this stuff. Just give us a second. This is a brand new thing. We're just going to do a few episodes, and if Tom can Joe's stand, tech guy. If so Tom if did. Tom can stand me enough after a few episodes, then we'll take it to the next level. So I got you, brother. Hey, but hurry, hurry up with that shit because I got a lot of people asking me, and I just keep yeah, blaming yeah, it on tell you. Them to, tell them to calm down. You can blame it on me. I'll just tell them to calm. Oh, I do. I do. I don't even think twice about it. Hey, I always love our conversations, brother. Um, enjoy the rest of your see, weekend, man. and we'll talk soon. You got it. All right, take guys. Care, everybody. Yep. Everybody. See ya. See ya.